burbler is in his element. <laughs> it's just like nature. It's what we're all about. Wagons ho! <laughs> Have a look at that! Just when they think it's safe to come out. Not an animal! Bang! <laughs> I guess in the end that's probably why we all go fishing. Dougie, you must have said your prayers last night for the day. This is absolutely straight out of a picture book, isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful here. The sun's out, there's not much wind. And just a nice ripple on the water to work the float, so I think we'll try a bit of float fishing. Folks, this show over 13 seasons has been successful because we've got representatives all around the nation and, in fact, the globe. And our Western District man is Doug Lucas. And he's invited us down to Lake Alingamite today in the middle of Western Victoria in Southern Australia. Now, Doug, there are some nice fish in here, namely brown and rainbow trout and redfin and the odd tench. But uh, what do you think you might have in store for our viewers today? Because this is the first time, I believe, our viewers have graced the shores and the confines of this marvellous little lake. day like today, the way the weather is, I'll be fairly confident we can get a brown trout and maybe a redfin or two out of here today. Yeah. Well, that's pretty good advice from a guru, and I mean that all sincerely. Now. We're going to fish with floats. We're in about, let me see, 11 and a half to 12 foot of water. So we're gonna put the floats down about eight or nine feet. And the trout in lakes, kids, you've got to understand, in a stream, they can be there for years because the stream sends the water through their gills, they trap the oxygen. But in a lake, the fish have to move all the time to get that water through. So a little bit of nature study on the piscatorial side from Rexy. Join us, folks. I'm fishing with one of my best friends. Should be a bit of a hoot. Way to put these mud eyes on about a size 12 or a 14 hook. We've got the little wind cases here that's, that's what they'll come out when they hatch out. They use this to fly with in the dragonfly. We just nip them and lift those wings up like that. Just put the hook gently through there, through the top of the wing case. And that way when we've got him hooked up like that, he can still swim quite freely. And we don't kill him and he'll last that way for quite a while. And he can move around there quite well then. Off you go, off you go, off you go. We just need him to, here we go, here we go. He's actually got it now. Go on, take a bit more out if you're fair dinkum. You know, I've always loved float fishing as a kid. I caught my first fish on a float in 1956. He's actually swimming down, actually swimming down. Where are you mate? He's swimming towards me and he's on. <laughs> I caught my first fish on a float at the end of the Mentone Pier, which is now demolished, in 1956, the year that the Olympic Games were in Melbourne. And ever since then, like any kid, I've had floatitis. 
Now I've been fly fishing and marlin fishing and barramundi fishing all over the world, but this is really what turns me on. Is float, look at that nice brown trout. <laughs> Dougie boy. <laughs> Dougie, nicely, will you pass me that net, mate? He's a, a nicely nice marked fish. fish there, <laughs> oh, look at that. I'm just so very, very happy that I've got an opportunity. Now, come on, mate. Come on, come on. What we do is we bring the fish to the net. Bring the fish to the net and slide the net under and lift. Now, have a look at that. Have a look at that. That is a brown trout. And he is, he's 1.2 or 1.3 kilos. And he took my mud eye. And that was just about 10 minutes after we've anchored here. He swallowed it completely. Now what I'll do is I'll, I'll just break that line off, just like that. And that is a perfect example of what this Western District Lake region is all about. Lake Alingamite, hey? Dougie boy. That is a pretty nice conditioned male brown trout. And look at the mud eye still on his lips. Absolutely marvellous. And kids, don't worry. You can still see the hook and the mud eye there. The mud eye, well, that'll just fall apart and be eaten by his mates. And that hook will be gone by tomorrow. It's a very, very low grade uh, bronze hook. And the metal will just get away in these Western District lakes. And this fish will go on and Let's hope we can catch him in a few years' time on Rick's Hunt Fishing Adventures. Well, I'll give him a bit of a kiss and we'll pop him back in, will we? Mate, thank you very much for joining us. Let's see if he wants to swim. And away he goes, folks. I tell you what, there are better fighting fish around, but there's not much better environment that when you sit out here, there's not another boat on this lake today, Douglas. Now, let me ask you a couple of questions. Lake Alingamite, in the Western District of Victoria near the township of Cobden, it is a, I think it's an extinct volcano, is it? It is, it's part of the system, that runs right through Camperdown, Colac, they're scattered right throughout. We've got Parambrit, Bull and Mary, the most well-known ones. But there's times like this time of the year when the other lakes shut down, you can come across here, peace and quiet, and you can nearly always get a fish. Doug, you do a lot of work for the Rex Hunt Future Fish Foundation, but you're also close to fisheries. I believe they stock this on a regular basis. We stock it every year with about 2,000 browns and 2,000 rainbows. And every year it produces fish in the old scale over 10 pound. Yeah. Every year those quite of those fish come out of here. Going off in the bait run here, Rex. Good, Douglas. Let's see what he feels like. A bit of pressure on him. Got a fish, mate. Got, got a fish. <laughs> got a fish. Well, now. It feels like it's a reasonable sort of a fish. Well, what you're going to try and speculate is whether it's a redfin or a brown trout. It's not. Not uh, doing massive runs like not, trout do. No, he's not head shaking and going for the weeds and that like a brown might be a ready mate. If it is, I tell you what, with a bit of weight on the rod, it may be a well into a fair size ready. There is some nice redfin in here, no, up to 1.4, 1.5 and a little bit better. Are they really? You've got a bit of colour here. Oh, a nice redfin. It is a nice redfin. Pretty redfin. Gee, look at those beautiful stripes and those characteristic got red his fins. Fins up there. Look at that. Hey mate, that is a very, very nice fish. Thank you very much. Have a look at that, mate. Uh, she's well over a kilo. That fish. Yeah, yeah. Just nudge over a kilo. That fella. Just absolutely beautiful. It and took... just lip too with a mud eye. <laughs> the thing about the mud eyes, I normally just just get it in the lip. Yeah. So One Doug, little thing you've just got to yeah. uh, be a bit careful of. Keep a bit of pressure on those or they will spit the mud eye out. Yeah. Hey, that is a beautiful looking fish. Look at that, an English perch. Red fin. You know where they got their name from. It possibly should be red fins. Because look at those beautiful red fins. That's a nice example. And folks, so many people write to me. So many people pull me up in the street and say, 
Why do you kiss the fish and put them all back? Well, folks, I don't. I give them a nice kiss, and this one is going into the frying pan. Doug, an absolutely fine example of a Western District Redfin. Yes, a beautiful fish and a lovely table fare.